there another video um so yeah star trek prodigy just had its uh season finale and uh i did watch it so this is a good time to talk about it uh so yeah star trek prodigy that one is uh it's actually from nickelodeon one of the only nickelodeon shows that ever watched funnily enough uh Prodigy is an animated series. Uh, it is set... It fills the niche of being sort of the family Star Trek show. You know, the uh, sort of all ages, kid-friendly. Um, and excels. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, like, yes, it is sort of a kid-friendly show, but it is not a stupid show by any means. Uh, it is a show that does trust the audience. It is a show that does respect the audience's, uh, intelligence. Um, and yeah, it was a great season. Um... I did talk about the first uh, half of the season in a previous video. Um, the second half, uh, yeah. So the first half of the season ran from October twenty twenty one until February twenty twenty two, and then the second half of the season ran until October of this year until. Uh, just, you know, yesterday. So it was a weird, kind of weirdly split. Uh, the way it split was kind of weird. But, uh, anyway, so the first half of the season sort of introduced the cast, introduced the, uh, the premise. Um, second half of the season... was sort of built on different threat. Um, so at the end of the first half of the season, we find out that uh, the Diviner, uh, the bad guy of the season, that he had installed a weapon from the future onto the Protostar. What the weapon would do is it had a computer virus that would cause all the Federation, that would cause any Federation uh, technology to turn against itself. So, second half of the season was just about the crew trying to figure out how to deal with that, how to get rid of the weapon, how to contact Starfleet without making them vulnerable to the weapon, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, meanwhile, they were, be they were being chased by Admiral Janeway. And there's a lot of tension. It's There's a really good job at building tension throughout, uh, th from episode to episode. Obviously, still mixed with, you know, it is a family show, so there's still a lot of uh, humor as well. Um, but, yeah, there is a lot of tension. Um, <laughs> there's an episode with Borg, where they come across the Borg. That's, you know, pretty wild thing. Uh, and that gets very tense. Uh I was surprised at the introduction of uh, Akana, and I was really, I really liked how they used it, or how they used him. 
because of course uh arcana was uh sort of the star of a uh second season episode of star trek next generation um they brought back the same actor who played him uh billy campbell they played brought him back to to play akana and made him very different a very different take on the character compared to uh how he appeared in the next generation because in the next generation episode he was just sort of like he was a rogue as he was described he was you know this dashing figure uh and they sort of play with that a little bit here with everyone being very impressed with him but then it turns out that he is very much just uh looking out for himself so he's sort of a you know grizzled old uh, smuggler who's kind of past his prime um and uh yeah just really cool really cool use of Akana like they they sort of played with viewer expectations of uh, the character in a really good way. Um, another thing I like about the show, and uh, something I like about this current generation of Star Trek as a whole, is the deep love for Star Trek history and lore. Uh, there's a lot of use of like there's a fair number of references to sort of older Star Trek stuff. An entire episode revolving around a dude who appeared in a single episode of the original series. Um which was hilarious to me um and like a lot of love for starfleet and the federation and what the federation represents um really good revelation regarding dal's uh origins um It was cool getting sort of, there was a good episode giving backgrounds on the cast members, or on the characters, showing sort of where they came from, how they ended up uh, getting captured by the Viner and sent to that uh, Tars Lamora, the planet uh, that the, the show starts on. Uh, so how they all ended up in captivity uh, is really cool seeing the origin stories of the characters. Um, there was some good use of the Diviner. Uh, the Diviner himself continued to be a presence in the second half of the season uh, in a really good way a little bit kind of predictable at times but in a way that really really worked uh and then yeah i really like that and then the final the two-parter uh, at the end of the season the season finale really good really ramps up the tension first part absolutely ramps up the tension the second part resolves the main conflict fairly quickly but also in a really clever and satisfying manner uh 
then yeah, there's and then the second half of the of that season of that final episode is really about the future. Uh, a lot of stuff sort of setting up season two, which I really hope does happen. Uh, I am really hoping that there is a oh there is there is going to be a second season. Nice. I'm really happy that there's going to be a second season because it sets it up really well. Uh, it does do a really good job setting up a second season. Uh, and yeah, it's... For all that... It is the family show. Um, a lot of effort did go into it. You can tell that there's a lot of effort. Uh, apparently they had an astrophysicist uh, as a consultant uh, working in the writer's room. Because they wanted this one to have uh, a greater degree of scientific accuracy than Star Trek usually does. Uh, because they want to encourage kids to get into science. So I think they wanted, because it is aimed at a younger audience, they wanted the science to be sort of more accurate to get people more interested, more involved in science. Which uh, hopefully works. And the season and the show does work as a great introduction to Star Trek. It works as a really good introduction to the franchise. Um, you know, sort of a ragtag group of young people learning what the Federation is, what it stands for, uh, at the same time that the audience learns what the Federation and Starfleet stand for. Um, yeah it's just it's uh it is i think an exceptional uh series it is it is fantastic it's uh it fills the niche well and it sort of really does serve even more than even more than the other Star Trek shows going on right now. It serves very much as a love letter to what Star Trek stands for. Um, and uh, yeah, that's great. That is, you know, that's definitely important. Because Star Trek is great. Star Trek's important. Star Trek means a lot. The fact that it's animated, I suspect, probably is, uh, is something that probably turned off some potential viewers. I know my mom, for example, uh, despite the fact that, you know, she's been watching Star Trek for decades. Um... You know, she hasn't watched uh, Prodigy in no, in large part, primarily, basically entirely, because it is an animated series. Um, Star Trek is not a show that has traditionally been animated. Uh, so I think, you know, for some long time watcher, long time uh, viewers, 
that's probably sort of something that turned some of them off, but which is a shame because, you know, I think if they give it a chance, they'll love it because it is what Star Trek has always aspired to be. Um, so anyway, yeah, so. Those are just some of my thoughts on Star Trek Prodigy. Like I said, if you like Star Trek, highly recommend this one. Um, and it's one that you can go into without any knowledge of Star Trek. Uh, it does, it does kind of assume that, or I don't want to say that, but it does, it's meant to be accessible to people who have never watched Star Trek before. So even if you know nothing about Star Trek, the show Prodigy, Star Trek Prodigy, is going to be accessible. You're not going to be lost. And uh, it's got, you know, a solid story arc, uh, really good character arcs for the entire cast, um, some pretty good humor, uh, some pretty good uh, drama. few bits of really good action. Yeah, it's just a great show. So, yeah. Thanks for watching my video. And I'll uh, see you next time.